Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer. Um, I won't elaborate on what Buddha the Gas Pump is, but what I would like to say is that we're in a rather unusual meeting, um, the likes of which may never have happened before, which is a gathering of maybe 30 spiritual teachers um, who have come for the Science and Non-Duality Conference, but we decided to meet before the conference to discuss some of the issues that are dear to the heart of the Association for Spiritual Integrity, which I helped found along with Jack O'Keefe and Craig Holiday uh, a couple of years ago, and um, Miranda McPherson and Mariana Kaplan have since joined our advisors and board of directors. Um, so we've had a meeting for the past couple of hours in which we've discussed a number of things, and we then broke out into smaller groups um, to focus more deeply on about five specific topics that had come up during the first couple of hours. Now we're back together, and we are going to tape this part of it and um, g offer a little report from a member of each of those five groups um, as to what was covered in that discussion. And then we're going to go around the room and everyone is going to give a one sentence um, commitment uh, that they would like to carry out into their lives after the conference that was perhaps inspired by the discussion we've had today. So I'm going to hand the mic to Mariana. Uh, I think, Rick, you um, shared the essence of, of what we're going to be offering here, but I just want to appreciate that on a day like today that this amount of you know, gifted, talented leaders chose to spend four and a half hours together. And um, I think that we really did hear a lot of vulnerability and openness and we may not have solved the issues, but the you know really important themes have been brought forth, and so we will turn it to the spokesperson of of each team, and we'll get these summaries. Uh, so the ASI was was founded with the intention of creating greater ethical awareness and uh, continuing education and professional growth for spiritual teachers. So we saw this need because there were so many uh, wounds within the different spiritual communities. And so we wanted to support this. And so that, that's what, this, uh, what the ASI is all about, is continued education, growth, accountability, transparency, creating a sense of greater integrity w within this community, within this community. Uh, my name is Maya Apollonia Rodea, and I was in the group that d talked about bringing forth women and uh, feminine empowerment, uh, which was a topic of our previous circle earlier in the day. And I think one particular aha that we had was simply to distinguish between women and yin, for example, yin style teachings or the yin within each of us um, as a way to not exclude men from that conversation and not exclude the fact that men are in, within themselves dealing with similar issues. Um, and then the action items, uh, the ones related to sand, uh, one idea was to have um, each day of sand include a three-hour uh, session led by a woman or women um, that had a, that wasn't competing against a, a lot of other stuff so that there would be uh, an emphasis to bring in that sacred container for those types of teachings for we could say yin style teachings um, and to bring more of the yin type of teachings onto the website uh, what's offered through the sand website and one idea was um to replace the, or to have another kind of gathering where instead of science and non-duality, it's yin and non-duality or some other, <laughs> other frame of that, um, that gathering. And um, another idea was to have uh, some list serves online uh, where women, one for women and one for, let's say, yin teachers, um, that would include a photo and bio of each, each person so that we start to bring together these different um, uh, people that are working in those different ways. And finally, uh, the idea of finding ways that we can support each other in the process of bringing more balance to that.
So I hope I did justice to our talk. Thank you. So I'm Danny Antman, and our group was ongoing growth for teachers and continuing education, trauma, attachment, and shadow work. And some of what we talked about was, um, could you do that? What's, um, to have a survey of some teachers here about what is working for you best um, and put in practices that are working for the teachers around these topics. Um, a group or personal growth council to continue in, continue deepening a group of peers that meets regularly. Um, some kind of appropriate sharing of our the depth of our process, our internal work with students in an appropriate way so that they know that we're doing our work. And um, a kind of tribal gathering that where teachers gather with um, younger teachers um, where honesty and vulnerability uh, are in place and the teacher can be free of the role of the teacher in that place. Um, to talk about the role of the teacher, so on a regular basis. And then our action was to perhaps to have a workshop, even if it's online, around developmental trauma, which that shows up in the teacher role, that all teachers really need to be informed by that. And it could be done as an inquiry model with a kind of questionnaire like you gave us, where the teacher assesses themselves regularly, regularly. Um, also where the principles of developmental trauma are taught. And um, yeah, I, these are two separate things. One is the online teacher assessment that a teacher can go online and assess themselves on a regular basis around some of the things you had us do and perhaps a longer list. Um, so that's about it. Our group is about creating community and peer support. And we had two areas that we covered. One was for creating more support among spiritual teachers. And the other area was how do we include disenfranchised people of color, young people much more into the spiritual community that is pre presently very white and um, middle class. So the one area, the action items we decided we would like to move forward with, um, with IS, would be to have a meeting possibly once a month for spiritual teachers to have a peer group online. It could be also that we have it in just like now before SAND as a meeting together. And it could be also that we have a listing where we could contact each other, like through Facebook, have a close group together, so that we have a much more substantial support that we can not only support each other, but also hold each other accountable, run things by each other, and um, bring up issues that come up as a spiritual teacher. The second part was that we, our action item is to do with how do we include more people of color and young people in our community here. And um, we, we raised the issue that it has to do a lot with financial, the financial situation. And so one idea was to create a webinar or to create... Um, let's say, on more online that would allow a whole group to be established by people who are young, who want to practice together, but maybe can't afford the expensive retreats. And so that we would possibly offer that to bring more people in. And also to create more community among each other so we can refer people to each other is to have a referral listing in IS where... It's like your name is in there and then your specifics of what you offer and which area you work and what price range do you offer. Do you give scholarships? Do you work, you know, particularly with um, older people or younger people so that we really bring um, a variety in and that we know of each other. Oh, thank you. 
I'm Sean Murphy, and we our group was Healthy Power Dynamics and Dual Relationships. And we seem to end up mostly talking about the difficulties with dual relationships and power dynamics. Um, there are, our insights were um, people will come and go from spiritual training groups and that we should remember not to take things personally necessarily. Um, although it may be our fault, in which case we should take it personally. <laughs> and, uh, to, and that there's, um, there should be a balance between accountability and it's their stuff. Somewhere in between, there's a, there's a balance point. Um, and it was pointed out that we might have an expectation that people should stay. And what about individuation? What about people moving on in the way, um, the way the teenagers move on, et cetera? And, um, and can, you, can we head off some of these issues by, um, by warning or saying something about it in, in advance or creating an agreement in advance? And uh, our action items were, uh, as the person in power, uh, w perhaps we, could n we should name the power dynamic and the fact that emotions and triggers can come up, uh, and make an agreement that people can play different roles or will be playing different roles, and a regular check-in on emotions and triggers uh, uh, on some sort of regular basis. Uh, yes, my name is Kumi, and uh, we talked about the ethics of the spiritual community. And I suggested that we should have something like BBB, Better Business Bureau, for the spiritual community. Uh, this uh, bureau won't, uh, will just keep the data, uh, will not say this is good, this is wrong. But just keeping the data um, and make a poster and send to all ashrams. And if something happens, uh, this um, person who got abused uh, can contact this place. And this bureau will just keep the data. That, that was my idea. <laughs> my name is uh, Shakti. We spoke about ethical behaviors and possible action. And we spoke about the importance to have awareness on misbehavior of teachers and guides. And also we spoke about another tendency that can, that can be with chanting and, and spiritual persecutions based on projection. And both things are true. And I think who has been a teacher knows how many times you receive projections and how many times they're based maybe on interpretations. And uh, how instead we also know how many times real things happen. And we agree that uh, what is important is growing awareness on the subject, maybe doing even a conference about this, uh, making a summit about this. So there is more um, awareness in the seekers, in the students and in the teachers that certain behavior are not approved. And in this way, you know, maybe uh, people that uh, have some uh, misconduct uh, we'll, uh, we'll know that the tendency is not in this direction, where maybe in the past there was more hidden consensus or not speaking about it. So that's it, like growing awareness and the practical idea. Thank you. So here's the time where we get to see and hear and feel each other one more time. And it's going to come in the form, as I said, of a commitment and I'd like to just invite people to um, deeply consider right now, as you may have been in the last while, um, some um, authentic commitment that will be either personal or professional. Um, not both today, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak first, so I will model that it's going to be a sentence and pass it along this way. And... and I think that there um, is a lot of power in this, so I really want to invite us into our um, into our bodies and into our receiving of each other and um, supporting each other in in our commitments and really making space for for us to bring that forth and stand by it. Uh, so my name is Mariana Kaplan, and I commit 
that wherever I'm asked to um, speak or teach that I bring forth the importance of uh, the feminine and women's voices, which is um, totally inclusive and respectful of men as well. I'm Craig Holiday, and I'm just realizing that I, I give and give and give as a father, a teacher, as a therapist, and I'm committing to spending some time in silence and just being alone and just letting it all unravel and to take care of this inner child within me. I'm Peter Morton, and I commit to um, collaborating with and empowering, giving a voice, a platform to more women. I'm Sasha Mazo, and I commit to exploring my shadow and in an ongoing way and to helping to birth a new humanity. My name is Deborah Cohen, and I commit to... <clears throat> I've been offering shadow groups to a lot of people. I commit to offering shadow groups to spiritual teachers. I'm Kylia Taylor, and I commit to telling every appropriate person I meet about ASI and about, and I commit to participating in a women's video conference group if one gets organized. I'm Jim Schofield, and I commit to keeping ethical considerations in the forefront of our work with Soul Collage and, of course, with ethics. <laughs> I'm Nicola Madora, and I commit to speak the voice of the feminine unabashedly and also to walk in integrity in my life and in my work as a teacher. I'm Sharon Staffenson, and I commit to champion the yin energy, um, bringing that forth, and also to bring in the role of uh, developmental trauma in spiritual practices in life. I'm Pamela, and from a professional perspective, I would like to help really organize some of this information in terms of the workshops we've talked about, and maybe because I'm in Iowa part-time, work with Rick on this and really get some of the grunt work done. I'm Julie Brown Yao, and I commit to continue to speak from my heart with honesty and integrity and vulnerability and strength. I'm Kristen Kirk. I just got here for the tail end of all the beautiful sharing that all of you have been doing. So my honest commitment is just of continuing to hear more of what you have all brought forward. And if there's anything that aligns for me to support in that way, that my commitment is to do that. So thank you all for, for doing all this. Um, my name is Carolina Falanga. I also just came in on the tail end of this. Um, and so my commitment is to speaking authentically in all of my relationships and coming from my heart. Hi, I'm Christina, and I am committed to always staying present and always coming from a place of love. My name is Caverly Morgan, and uh, we spoke quite a bit about power and women, uh, touched a little bit on people of color, but I specifically feel committed in this moment to supporting myself and other white identified teachers with seeing what work is ours to do so that as we talk about inclusivity, um, we're being a space that um, can actually do that and own, do the work that's ours to do. Thank you. My name is Jack O'Keefe, and my commitment is totally beautifully personal. I want to take care of my body a bit better uh, to deepen my understanding of what it is to be human. My name is Sundari Jensen, and I commit to simplifying and expanding at the same time our training that we have for ethics and guidelines for teachers and leaders to make it more um, widely accessible for you, for everyone who wants it. I'm Ellen O'Brien, and I am committed to keeping the conversation about ethics in our spiritual community a living uh, conversation, and also to staying connected to other spiritual teachers and communities so that we can learn from each other. 
I'm Jeffrey Martin, and I commit to creating some online digital safe spaces for peer-to-peer -peer interactions, both of people that experience things like non-duality in a persistent, ongoing way, and also people who help those that do. I'm John Parker. Um, deep gratitude for this day and this gathering. Um, I commit to ASI in any way that I can uh, possibly uh, be involved. Um, and I'm open and available to that to take place. I'm Catherine Bell, and I'm committing to deepening my personal growth work as a teacher and as a human being, and perhaps broadening that as well into other areas that I'm not as comfortable in, since getting comfortable is dangerous. My name is Laren, and uh, I commit to uh, finding the marginalized uh, people without access to, to teachings and these concepts and ideas and ways of experiencing and uh, bringing the information to them so they can reconceptualize their, their pain and their struggle and, and find a different way of living. I'm Sean Murphy. I commit to continued openness and vulnerability and continuing to learn and clarify. I'm Richard Stewart. And I'm committed to opening my heart so that I can be more accepting of the wide variety of spiritual experience for everyone that works with me. I'm Locke Kelly, and I commit to the integrity, the vulnerability, and the love to welcome all shadow parts within myself and to help others embody and awaken uh, while including everything. I'm Danny Antman, and I commit to continuing this dialogue with my peers so I'm not so isolated. And to ASI's work, I'd like to be more involved. I'm Bonnie Greenwell. Um, I'm committed to getting more involved with ASI also and uh, to doing whatever I can to uh, support people who are trying to bring more integrity and wisdom into spiritual teaching. I'm Rick Archer, and um, I commit to living up in my personal life to the admonitions of two different spiritual teachers. One was Don Juan Matus, Carlos Castaneda's teacher, who said, a warrior has time only for his impeccability. And the other was Padma Sambhava, who said, although my awareness may be as vast as, as the sky, my attention to karma in other words, action or behavior, is as fine as a grain of barley flour. Hi, my name is Kumi, and uh, my commitment is to do my best to uh, serve for the divine. And uh, also, I came, I'm from Japan, came from the farthest east, so to be a mediator uh, of the Western and Eastern world belief system. I'm Jeannie Zandi, and I also have a very um, personal commitment, which is to uh, make two more peer buddies and deepen in relationship with them. I'm David Doyle. <clears throat> I commit to um, co continuing to uh, bring into my awareness a lot of what we have done here and uh, I didn't know what to expect and this has been uh, intimate and pretty incredible. And then also I, I'll try and come up with at least a template, a uh, semi-legal template for purchasing properties as for groups. I'm Lorraine Taylor and I commit to um, looking into my own heart my own integrity, my own humanity, and empowering others to do the same. I'm David Elsey, and I commit to doing everything in my conscious power and unconscious power to be a place, a location where all aspects of both humanness and transcendence can be known to be one, and for it to be a place for others to know that as well. I am Shakti Katerina Maggi. I commit myself to be a service of everybody and loving everybody as embodiment of the divine. I'm Susie Adra, 
and I commit to transparency, authenticity, and listening to my inner guidance and speaking my truth no matter what. I'm Kabir Helminski, and I commit to explore with the groups that I'm responsible for how to increase trust, honesty, uh, and vulnerability. I'm Kent Welsh, and I commit to supporting the authentic and harmonious um, relationship and expression of the yang and the yin. I'm Lisa Rankin, and personally, I recommit to the Hippocratic Oath and the concept of first doing no harm, which means for me staying in therapy and being really um, in integrity around relationship and power dynamics. And professionally, I'm really committed to taking the kind of work that we do in healing and spiritual teaching and bringing it to more marginalized communities more accessibly, more affordably. My name is Maya Apollonia Rode, and I commit to continuing to deepen my capacity to act with integrity, even when it's scary or challenging or life-threatening. I'm Mirabai Starr, and I am committed to lifting up the voices of younger women spiritual leaders and helping them find what is uniquely theirs to bring to the table, and especially uh, younger women of color. I'm Sonia Amrita Bibelos, and I commit to ever-evolving personally and professionally and supporting others to evolve in their authentic, right-aligned way. I'm Renata Ledantek, and I commit to keep exploring what can be done and to keep contributing to ASI. So let's take a few moments here um, both to um, dedicate to our commitment and also to if you heard commitments echoed around the room that you also want to commit to to take to take a moment to choose those two right? to choose um, what you want to commit to and because there's so many people here with great blessing power I want to ask us to bless and support the the voiced and not voiced commitments of of each other and thank you from ASI from my hearts thank you and like we've met now so I want to invite us all to just start talking to each other we may not have right now we know each other so too take advantage of these days and you know bask in each other's light but also find these peers that we're looking for and make new friends and give ourselves a chance to um, come out of the isolation of many people's roles of leadership let's let's really be together as as peers and allies in these days and make new friends and enjoy ourselves and each other as well a big thank you just I was speaking with these two girls at lunch today and it was just, uh, I just thought what a success this is, just how great it is to get everyone in the same room. You know, I've been to a lot of conferences and things before where teachers walk around aloof in their own little bubbles and this is a beautiful thing we're creating. So let's keep it up. If you're not a member of the ASI, please join us. We have all kinds of ongoing meetings and uh, all kinds of ways to support each other. Um, yeah, so please, please join us. We're so thankful. Jack, anything? So, um, the ASI is a, is, a, is a member organization. I mean, it's just us, you know, <laughs> making it up as we go along. Will we try this? Will we try that? And, and some things work and some things don't, even though I might be 
full of steam for it and it falls flat and we just go and try the next thing. And, and this worked. Um, and there's a lot of ideas here that came today that it's like, hmm, we could do that. Hmm, we could do that. So I don't know what will actually come to fruition. Um, I'm really appreciative of the, the, the people who said, I want to do more and support the ASI. We need help. There, it's only peers taking care of peers. So it's it can be as resourcing as we make it for ourselves. That's the gig. Um, that's all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving the time. Thank you. Thank you. And a special thank you to Mariana. Mariana and Batgap and all the little parts that, that uh, made it happen. Thank you, folks. <laughs>